So this week is like a, 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 a foundational night to where we're going to get into some foundational stuff, some introductional stuff, and then we're going to get deep into the word coming kind of the next following weeks on how to get an understanding of God's word. We need to know how to study God's word in order to get understanding. Because when you don't have understanding, you, don't, you can't get to application. So if you don't understand the word of God, you can't apply the word of God. And one thing that I've been seeing in, is, is a lot in my ministry life is, is that, you know, you have two, two types of people. You have those that know the word from a place of quoting, but don't understand the word from a place of living. Then you have those that understand the word of God. And, and those are the ones that truly can find themselves applying the word of God a lot easier. Because if you have a false understanding of the word and you're trying to apply that, you're applying an error. So you don't get the fruit of the word. This is why I don't know if it's been relevant in some of your lives, but, but there's been times in my life is where I, it just wasn't working for me in certain areas. You know, I'm trying to apply the scriptures. I'm trying to apply the word. And it wasn't until I figured out, man, I understood this wrong. And actually, it was more dangerous to me because I didn't understand it properly and tried to apply it from the wrong understanding than it was for me not to know it at all. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? So, so this is what we're going to be dealing with in this series. See, the Bible consists of applicable principles that, that Christ has laid out and taught the apostles. The apostles taught them through their epistles, and these are applicable principles. These are not things that can't be applied in your life. I think I was sharing with uh, Sister Ingrid uh, yesterday, and I was sharing it with Vita too, and I think I may have said it, because it's something I've been sharing lately, is that the New Testament, in the New Testament church, the New Testament epistles of the Bible, it speaks of spiritual gifts, you know, teaches us about spiritual gifts and things of that nature and the supernatural things, but it teaches more on how to govern and steward your humanity, your natural life, than it does on them things. Not saying that those things are not important, but we can't really get to living in the supernatural if we can't be effective in the natural. You know, um, I don't think it's God's will for us to, to be able to exercise in spiritual gifts, but yet our natural lives is just tore up. That's not God's will for our life. You know what I mean? I don't think God wants us to be powerful in here and powerless out there. You know what I mean? That's, I believe that God wants a balance in our life. And, and I also believe that there's a lack of understanding when it comes to the things that the Bible talks about spiritually. To, to where we try to apply those things wrong and overlook the principles that it really takes to govern our lives here on earth. God wants us to live a kingdom life, you know, prospering, you know, and, and not prospering as just, you know, being wealthy or anything, but, but prospering the way that God says to prosper, to walk in the blessing that he's given us, you know, peace, joy, love, you know, these type of things, um, to also be in a place to where we can have financial stability, but coming from a level of stewardship and not mysticism, you know what I mean? Because what would have happened, that'll hinder us even more because it'll end up hurting your feelings. <laughs> You, you know, when you're doing stuff trying to manifest what principle has called to manifest, it'll end up when it don't manifest, it'll hurt your feelings. You know, you'll get to a place to where, you know, it's not working, so you don't want anything to do with the church. And a lot of, I've seen a lot of people do that. So tonight, we're going to show the importance of getting an understanding of God's word so we can have an understanding of him, how he operates. You know, his attributes, what God will do, what God won't do, what was for you, what was not for you, what's in the Bible that has nothing to do with you, and, 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 and so on and so on. Because everything in the Bible is not for us. Right? And we also got to know who said things in the Bible. Just because a person said it don't mean, and it's in the Bible, don't mean that God said it. Just because it's in there. Don't mean that God said it. Job said some crazy stuff. <laughs> you know, that don't mean we're supposed to take the things that Job said in a, in a chaotic life and try to make that doctrine of truth. Can you turn that down a little bit? Try to make that doctrine of truth, right? So I believe before, before we can make a global impact, 
you know, a national impact, you know, sometimes we won't have these global platforms and things like that. But before we can make a global impact, we got to make an impact in our homes, right? Uh, we got to make an impact in our communities, right? But in order to do that, we have to get understanding of God's word, right? Not just being able to quote the scriptures, but understanding the scriptures, what they mean and what they say, how to apply this to our life, how to make this relevant to me, how to take the word of God and become one with the word of God. I believe in this season that's what God wants from us, right? I want to be affected. How many of you want to be affected? First, in my own life, right? I want to be able to access this peace the Bible talks about. I want to be able to access this joy the Bible talks about. I want to be able to access emotional healing, physical healing if I need it, you know, the way the Bible talks about. What does it mean, all these things? Or is this just a platform to where we try to just have things appear based on something that we do, or is it something we need to apply, right? Uh, your financial freedom is not going to come in the mailbox. You know, you get in the prophesying line and you give $100 and, you know, supernatural wealth is going to come in, check going to come in your mailbox, right? I've heard it too. And, and it's a turnoff, right? But how do you have healthy, a healthy, how do you live a life with financial stability? How do you have a healthy financial life? The Bible speaks on how to do that. How to store it. You know, you got to put in a little work. Somebody say put in a little work. So, uh, let's look at this. Let's go to Matthew 28 and 18. We're going to start off right there. 28, Matthew 28 and 18. I hope this bless you all. And this is, this is the commission. Jesus came near and said to them, all authority, somebody say all authority, all authority, has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations. Now, notice he said make disciples. Right? First. Indeed, Jesus said of all nations. Now, let's get an understanding of what this word nations mean. It's not bodies of land mass, you know, you know, it, it's, it's talking about races of people, right. right? So Jesus was saying, hey, I want you to make disciples of all races. So at this point here, it was not just about the Jews, amen? Jesus now said, I want you to take what I've given you, and I want you to take it out, and I want you to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, 20 is what I want us to focus on. Teaching them, somebody say teaching them, to observe everything I have commanded you. So from that we see that making disciples, teaching is a part of making disciples, right? You teach them. And what are we teaching them? What Jesus commanded, right? What Jesus taught to the disciples. They turn around and they taught others. They wrote it in the epistles. And now we have it and we're supposed to teach others and make others disciples of Jesus Christ by teaching them what he taught and what the apostles was given the authority to establish the church. And therefore we take it and we still teach that. We don't supposed to be teaching outside of the word of God. Now, with this teaching, you can't teach someone unless you understand yourself. <laughs> you know, it's like the blind leading the blind. We must become stewards of his word, so they can become stewards of his word. We must become stewards of his word. We have to be intentional about studying and getting an understanding from the word of God, so then we can apply the word of God. Amen? Now, it's very funny Jesus said, teach them. Teach them, teach them, teach them. We should have a hunger to learn, and we also should have a hunger to teach. Teaching a person can be way more effective than just talking to them or commanding them or telling them. 
This is what patience and long suffering comes in. It takes patience to be a teacher. Look at the disciples. Look how much patience Jesus had with them. There was plenty of time when Jesus got real frustrated. Like, man, how long you want me to be with y'all, man? God, dog. How long? I got to go. Y'all got to get this right here. You know what I mean? Because sometimes people are not going to get it. But have you ever, ever been in a place in your life with God that that light bulb came on? And it was like, oh, that's what he meant. I got it. Those moments in my life I cherish because it changed the perspective of my thought life when it came to what God revealed to me. Right? So we need to be seeking God for understanding. Ask questions. One of the greatest tools you can use when studying is asking questions. Don't approach the scripture like you already know. Right? Don't do that. So, write this down. You can't demonstrate what you don't understand. You cannot demonstrate what you don't understand. Now, teaching births understanding, and understanding births application. For we cannot apply what we don't understand. We want to be able to demonstrate the Word of God in our everyday lives. But you can't demonstrate it. You can't apply it. You can't make this relevant in your life physically if you don't have an understanding of it. You can't. And we got to get out of a place to where, or let me rephrase that, I want us to get to a place to where when we study, we die to what we've already learned. Mm -hmm. Approach it empty. Mm -hmm. That's good, right? Approach it empty. You know, approach it like you don't know anything about it. And allow Holy Spirit to take you on this journey. And, and don't get deep with it. If you have to pick up resources, if you have to look at the historical facts, then pray to Holy Spirit. And when I say don't get deep with it, don't overwhelm yourself. <laughs> you know, don't, 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 don't isogeet the scripture. Read the totality of the scripture to gain understanding. Write that down if you got to. Read in context. You know what I mean? Don't cherry pick the scripture. Don't come up. Don't make the scripture, don't get a def definition in your heart about what it's saying and make the scriptures turn into which, which, what you want it to turn into. You, you, you are not going to be able to apply what God said because you're making the word say what he did not say. Right. Amen? Amen? We're believers. We have Holy Spirit in us. It's simple. It may not be simple to one who don't believe, but to us, it's not complex. We just have to take the time to gain understanding. Pray to the Holy Spirit. Show me. All right? But don't get lazy and just read two scriptures and thank Holy Spirit. <laughs> Finna give you, you see what I'm saying? Read the whole context. If you're studying Romans chapter 6, go ahead and read the whole book of Romans, then go back to Romans chapter 6. To gain, you, you need to know, okay, what was the purpose of Paul writing to the Romans? You know, what was the theme of this? You know, what's the who, what, when, and the where? <laughs> you see? And then come back and develop and watch how the revelation of the word will come alive, man. Because there's a lot of things that I was taught that was in error. In error, because I didn't have proper understanding of it. So my application did not look right because my understanding was wrong. Right? But it wasn't until I died to my understanding, right? I died to what I thought and what I knew to be true. And I allowed the word of God to minister to me through the Holy Spirit in order to birth what was actually true. Let's go to Proverbs 3. Let's look at this. I'm getting some of this word. Let's go to 5, verse 5. Very familiar scripture here. It said, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and part B of this, and do not rely on your own, what? Understanding. See that? In all your ways, know him, and he will make your path straight. Right? 
So don't lead to your own understanding. Rely on him to give you understanding. You know, whether it's through a teacher, whether it's through your study time, whatever that may be, allow him to birth understanding. Because when you approach something, when you approach something like you already know it, you'll never get understanding of it. See what I'm saying? See, see I believe that there's an intense season that we're in when it comes to development of God's word. Why? Because God wants to do some things in our life. Whenever God wants to do some things in our life, he opens up his word to us. Right? But if we're not open to be open to his word, then we're not going to manifest what he wants us to manifest in this season. Right? It's, it's not, we got to get away from, you know, I, I love praising God. I love all this. So disclaimer, I'm not saying all that. But we got to get away from the mentality of that's the way to a fruitful life. When we're praising God, guess what we're doing? We're praising him. <laughs> Simple. Put, we're not doing something to get something. We're singing praises to him, which is right. Right? We're honoring him. We're praising him, but not for him to manifest what he's already manifested in the word. When we want things to manifest in our life, we got to see what the word says about it. And from that, we can renew our minds and shift our posture so Holy Spirit can begin to work in us. And the work that he's doing in us, I say it all the time, we then can usher it outside of us. Amen. And impact everywhere that we go. How many of you know that's, that's possible? For you to make an impact everywhere you go. Think about it. If every proclaiming Christian had an understanding of the kingdom of God and was content in their place of occupying and understood the word the way that God intended, this world would be in a whole nother place. But because the believers are absent, see how many of you know we can be present but still be absent? You can be in a place but out of place, right? And the word of God, what that does, it urges you back into place. It, how many of you know there are people in bondage because of a lack of understanding of the word? Years of bondage. How many of you know that there's freedom in his word? Right? I've made unfruitful decisions from misinterpreting scripture. Crazy, ain't it? <laughs> there's decisions that I should have made in my own life years ago, but because I, I allow the misinterpretation of Scripture to keep me in bondage. This is why understanding the Word of God is so important. Understanding what was the intent and what was the meaning of what God said. And the first step in that is getting out of your own understanding. Dying to Ryan Davis's perspective. <laughs> you see? Until I did that, it was things I couldn't get. Now watch this. This is in every arena of life. Because how many of you know, you can, you can humble, be humble, submissive to God in areas of your life. But there's some areas you really don't want to. You see what I'm saying? And those are the areas where it's a lot, havoc, a lot more havoc in our life. There's things in our life to where uh, it just can't get right. Why is that? Because there's something in the word of God that God has been trying to give you and get you to understand, but yet you're blocking that understanding. You're blocking that revelation in your own mind by approaching it based on what you think it means because you didn't hear pastor so-and-so or bishop so-and-so say that this is what this means instead of going to it for yourself. The greatest teachers know how to point you to the scripture. That's our job, to teach you in order for you to go study on your own, right? Where, 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 is it, where is it, I think, was it the Galatians? To where Paul, he was, he was, he, he, he wrote to, he was happy that they tested what he was saying. They didn't just take it for face value. Oh, the apostle Paul said it is so. No, go study this thing and get an understanding. Because man is imperfect. Right? Everybody makes mistakes up here. Right? So you go study that thing yourself and get up and watch this. Let's go deeper. 
it, the teaching may not be an error, but God may want to take you a little deeper to be relevant in your own life. Right? Right? And bring what's being taught. Because how, have you ever, have you ever uh, been, 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 been listening to some teaching and, and the man of God or the woman of God is teaching and his truth is good, but God shift that thing with you? And, and he make that thing relevant to you and, 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 and he make that thing go deeper and deeper into your conscience and you begin to see much farther than what was being taught. Right. It becomes rainbow to you. Right. So even if the teaching is not an error, you still want to get a full understanding. Because watch this, you can understand one part, but God want to take you deeper through the week and keep pulling revelation. Have you ever been there? And he keep building and building and bring more understanding and more understanding until now your life is being changed by the message. The message don't stop just because the preacher mouth closed. Amen. See? When, when I stop teaching tonight, that teaching don't stop. God want to keep building on this thing. Building on this thing. Build, taking you deeper, deeper until I get a phone call. Hey, man, listen to this. Man, I just got blessed by what you was teaching, but look what God showed me. And then, have you ever been in that place where you're on the phone with somebody and y'all just sharpening one another? For you know, the hour and pass by, hour and 30 minutes, you know what I mean? Because y'all building, y'all dialoguing, getting more and more understanding about the word and about what God wants to do from this word. But it all goes back to getting the proper understanding. Let's go to do, 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 do. Ooh, Matthew 13 and 19. I really want to go through this here. Watch this. Let's go up. Mm. Let, mm. Oh, man. Let's go to uh, verse 10. Let's go up to verse 10. Matthew 13, verse 10. Y'all yeah, excuse me. And it reads, Then the disciples came up, up and asked him, Who is him? Jesus. Why are you speaking to them in parables? He answered, because the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you to know, but, it's not, but it has not been given to them. For who, oh, whosoever has more will be given to him, and he who will have more than enough. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. That is why I speak to them in parables. Because looking they do not see, and hearing they do not listen or understand. This is Isaiah's prophecy. It will be fulfilled in them, which says, you will listen and listen, but never understand. You will look and look, but never proceed. For this, for this people's heart has grown callous. Their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn back, and I will hear them. Blessed are your eyes because they do see and ears because they do hear. For truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see the things you see but didn't see them. To hear the things you hear but didn't hear them. So listen to the parable of a sower. Anyone who hears the word about the kingdom and does not understand it, what happens? The evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. You see that? So, so if you're hearing the word of the kingdom and you don't understand it, the enemy will come snatch away what was sown. And how does he do it? How does he do this? How does he do it? He does it through doctrine. The Bible speaks of doctrines of demons. And if you, you hear the kingdom but you don't have any understanding of the kingdom, then it, it can't be relevant to you. It, it, it's, it's, you can't apply it. And the only thing that's going to happen, you're going to go back to what you have understanding of. And usually, sometimes, it's carnality. So this is important that we not only hear the word of God, hear the word of the kingdom, but we understand it. So why? We can apply it in our everyday life. You see what I'm saying? 
God gave us emotions. Somebody say emotions are good. But emotions should not supersede understanding. In other words, we should have a hunger and desire to understand God's word in clarity so we can go teach it in clarity. You see what I'm saying? And not look for this emotional fix when we enter the building. I'm going to church so I can feel these goosebumps. Right? And leave the church still empty but feeling good. See what I'm saying? Paul said this. He said, everything that I had, had, it was dumb to me. It meant nothing to me compared to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. The Bible said the weapons on warfare are not carnal, but they're what? Mighty through what? Through God for the pulling down of strongholds. And every imagination mm -hmm. that exalts itself mm -hmm. against what? Mm -hmm. The knowledge of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How do we gain knowledge of him? His word. Mm -hmm. Understanding his word. Understanding what Jesus meant by what he said. Right. You know, tonight, just a little introduction. We're going to get deep in this thing <laughs> coming into the next week. Understanding who Jesus was talking to. Right. Was there a Jew? Was there a Samaritan? Was there Pharisee? It? <laughs> Were they trying to get him in the trap? You know what I'm saying? Look at the context of what he was saying. Who was he talking about? All of these questions need to be asked so we can develop what? Understand. Right? All of this needs to. We have to. It's very imperative in this season that we get an understanding of God's word. We're living in an age that to, is no longer affecting just effective just quoting it. Amen. Why? Because it's too much temptation and it's too much access to demonic information, demonic doctrine. Right. I remember just when I was a little boy before phones, you, you, you know, we had the little TV with the little, uh, the little, the little, I used to take the little, uh, what you call it, aluminum foil. <laughs> I'm telling hey man, I used to get mad them cartoon, come on, I take that aluminum fall, and I've got that mug on now. And, and, and then it'll, it'll get to showing good, but as soon as I take my hand, I will go back. So now I'm watching TV like this. Right? I didn't I wasn't getting a lot of information. I was getting what grandmama told me. Right? Influence was not, I was only influenced based on what my physicality was. But nowadays, you pick up a phone. And you can go all the way around the world and back with information. So now the church has to be in a place. See, this is very prophetic here. The church needs to be in a place where now we're able to witness the gospel, give people direct answers to who Christ is, what heaven is, what earth is, what's our world, what's salvation. You got a lot of people that don't understand salvation. How can we witness salvation, but we can't explain it? Right. Just believe. In what? <laughs> what, what? What you telling me to believe in? Jesus Christ. Well, who he is. He's our Lord and Savior. How he become that? There were people that would ask you questions after questions, and they're not being arrogant. They really want to know. You telling me to believe something you can't tell me nothing about? You don't even have understanding of this? But you want me to participate in all this theatrics? They're out the door. This is the age that we're living in. We have to be able to tell and teach and preach this gospel with clarity, precision, and understanding. So people can make it practical in their own life. Ain't no olive oil going to save a marriage. It takes two people to be willing to comply with the word through understanding. Right. Not one, mm -hmm. two, two, dos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see? But where there's no understanding, there's ignorance. Mm -hmm. Ignorance thrives where understanding is absent. Mm -hmm. You see? And my goal in this series is to 
allow the need for understanding to be planted in our conscience. And I guarantee you, a lot of people that we're wanting to come in to the kingdom of God, we'll win them over. Because you got people speaking on the church that ain't even a part of the church. See, you, you got people who ain't even, who's not even called evil people. That's teaching stuff contrary to the gospel. And people are listening. And guess what? They're saying practical stuff. Mm -hmm. And they're debunking not the gospel, ladies and gentlemen. They're debunking religion. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. They're debunking religion. Mm -hmm. They're debunking stuff that we have took on in the church that has nothing to do with the church that Jesus Christ established. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? They're debunking that stuff, and it's, and it's destroying it's destroying our ability because, okay, you tell me that if I give a hundred dollars, you're gonna get thirty-four. So I give it. Nothing happens. Come back. It was because of your faith. <laughs> so I don't believe. Okay, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to give it again. I believe. Don't happen. I believe that time. No, you got to have strong will. I believe because I gave it to you. <laughs> the evidence that I believe it was going to happen because I gave it to you. Right. And then you give me a scripture, you know, to what is justifying what you're saying. And then somebody comes along that is not a believer and say what that scripture really means. Mm -hmm. And that didn't turn me off by the church. Wow. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because now this pastor lying to me, but this pastor really got a good heart. He's just saying the things he was taught. Yeah, right. I'm just using that for an example. Right. So now ignorance is bliss, right? So now out of the pastor's ignorance, not his heart, right. he's only saying what he was taught to be true. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? That's right. And now somebody messed up. Life is just twisted because they think, man, this stuff ain't real. And that's just one example that we do in our church service. Or we take a scripture and we twist it, you know, and make it mean something that is really not. Mm -hmm. And then somebody who's not a believer debunks that. And now because of our lack of understanding as leaders, we've, somebody else got worn over. Because while we had their attention, we brought them theatrics and then give them principles. See what I'm saying? I believe we're ushering to an age that when churches, the churches, the kingdom groups that God has placed in together, those that have eyesight on the climate of the earth that we're living in and that can grab the need for the culture that they're called to to teach them out of that mindset are going to be the churches that thrive mm -hmm. right yeah. because we've been talking about miracle signs and wonders and I ain't seen one yet <laughs> like they say it is but you know the miracles I've been seeing young man get off drugs yeah. mm -hmm. amen a father, this son, you know, being taught the word of God, practical, applying it to his life and becoming a kingdom man. How many of you know that's a miracle? Somebody getting saved is one of the greatest miracles of all. But we're looking for an arm to grow back. <laughs> we're looking for the dead to be risen. We're looking for the, 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 the ceiling to open up and, and, and all of a sudden it just rains right down that one spot and we collect the water and now... She go drinking and be healed. We looking at stuff like that. And that's not, that's not evidence in the New Testament. We need to focus on the word and get, and get understanding of the word so people can apply the word in their lives. You should be able to, when you teach someone, they should be able to take what you taught them home and apply it. Right? Apply that. Not have to go to another conference <laughs> in order to experience that. Right. 
Come on, I'm just being honest with y'all. You know, I got to go sign up for another conference in order to get this feeling that I had at the last conference. Why, why can't I take that home? And pay for it, right? Why can't I take this home? Why can't my children, we can't be, I ain't got no musicians and drums and smoke and stuff and I, at home. When I leave this conference, I need to take something applicable home and apply it to my life. Give me understanding of the word. Show, teach me the word. How to apply it to my humanity. I don't, this is me, I don't, I, I, I'm not really interested in angels. Because God commands them. I'm not, that's me. I'm more interested in how to be a man. How, a kingdom man. How to live this kingdom life. How to keep my marriage healthy. You know what I'm saying? How to govern my life. How to be financially stable. How to raise my children. You know what I'm saying? How to stay emotionally free. How to, if I have to yell in order to get my emotions free, I'm messed up because I'm going to have to be yelling in Lowe's, in Home Depot, <laughs> at the bank. I got to take my off. Y'all see what I'm saying? I got to take the theatrics with me everywhere I go <laughs> to stay emotionally free because what I deal with on a daily basis targets my emotions, don't it, Vito? The stuff, the stuff I deal with on a daily basis, I got to have something to apply in order for my character and my integrity to stay intact. Right. Mm -hmm. If not, man, I'm done. <laughs> but I want you to remember that. You know? Stop buying all these books that has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, I ain't knocking nobody, but hey, I'm trying to help you tonight. Right. You need something that can give you understanding. What's meant for us? Sometimes we're so heavenly, we're no earthly good. Come on, man. How can I enjoy life and still walk in integrity? The Bible teaches you that. But we'll skip over all of that so we can get to the exciting part. <laughs> well, it, it, it's supposed to be something, you know. <laughs> It, it, you know, it's supposed to be exciting. It should be exciting. But, you know, sometimes, you know, people, man, I, I want to shoo. When dealing with God, man, I, 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 I want to I, I wanna see that person get out that casket. I ain't going to say it God. I'm running. Watch this. This is, uh, I ain't write the dude's name down, but this is a quote from a guy. I'm going to give him credit later. It's important, <laughs> it is important to remember that we are to study the scriptures to seek and know Jesus as our source of eternal life. The power of understanding what the scriptures say is not for knowledge only, but because they testify of Jesus. The Pharisees knew about Jesus, but they missed the very point of why Jesus gave them prophetic scripture. <laughs> they, they, they missed the point about, they missed the whole purpose of the prophetic. See, it was all about Jesus. It still is. See what I'm saying? It's all about Jesus. It still is, right? They were blinded by self-righteous knowledge. Remember, excellent Bible studies should always humble us and remind, remember what I taught you, humility is what? Totally dependent on God. So, excellent Bible studies should always usher you to a posture of depending on God and reminding us of the limitless perfections of God's nature and attributes. We should never be impressed with how much we know intellectually about the Bible. We study that we may intimately abide in our relationship with Jesus Christ. I had to write that. I had to write that down because it's so powerful. He ex what, what, what getting understanding of the word does, it, it ushers us to 
Humility. Being more dependent on Jesus Christ. Even our gifts, our callings, all of this should always usher us to him. Right? And when it urges us to him, he's going to teach us how to live as sons in the earth. This life more abundantly, this eternal living. Not overwhelmed in our emotions, stressed out, full of anxiety. How to govern relationships, how to disconnect relationships. How, how, to, how to operate as the sons that we are in the earth and being his representative. That's what Bible study should be all about. Amen. That's what getting understanding of the word should be all about. Not on how to make more money. <laughs> because <laughs> Seriously. Because one thing I know that's true, and I'm demonstrating this in business, the more integral you are, the more truth you walk in, the more your light shines. Right. Opportunity is going to come. Right. People are going to come. You don't have to be worried about that. Right. Okay. Just develop that intense relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Right? We're living epistles. Somebody say living epistles. Living epistles. That means we demonstrate the word. That's, it. That's what that means. Mm -hmm. When you're living the word, you're becoming the word. Right. And he's giving you strength in that. Because he's in you, and now you have proper understanding of what he's saying. You can then, you can then, this, this kingdom right here, you then can access the principle, mm -hmm. apply the principle. Why? Because you have understanding of the principle. So after you apply the principle, what the principle says is going to happen is going to happen. That's right. But when you don't have understanding of the principle, that means you're ignorant to it. And whatever you're ignorant to, you can't use. And we're going to be learning this in this series. Because next week we're going to talk about how to study the Bible. <laughs> Very simple. We're going to get understanding. Right? Let's go to Ephesians 4 and 8. I'm sorry, 17. Ignorance thrives where there's no understanding. And, and what ignorance is, there lose, they, they, they leaves room for sin. Ignorance actually, sin takes occasion or, or, or what's the word I'm looking for? Ignorance give occasion to sin. It does. If you're ignorant of God's word, you can't apply it. So what else are you going to be applying? <laughs> you don't have another option. This is why it's important for us to get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. When getting all, get understanding. Right? You ever tried living with somebody that you just can't get no understanding from? <laughs> or being a friend with somebody that's just, I, I, everything I just get, you just on it, it's over your head. I'm spiritual, you're calm. You ever been in business with somebody, spirit, I'm trying to make moves spiritually. They say, man, give me my money now. I'm finna go buy or go to club. Wait a minute, man, we're trying to build something for the kingdom. The kingdom? <laughs> what, what you talking about? <laughs> the, this ain't, the, the, the kingdom, this ain't England? <laughs> Ain't no England, what you talking about? Ain't no king over here, just president. Shoot, we finna go buy that car, boy. We should hit a lick. You see what I'm saying? You, 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 you can't, how can you walk together unless you agree? How can you agree unless you understand? See how important this is? See, therefore, verse 17, therefore I say this in testifying the Lord, you should no longer walk as the Gentiles do, or that word walk, live. In the fertility of their thoughts, notice we're going back to what? Thoughts. Amen. The mind. Amen. Man, it's amazing how much the Bible talks about the mind. Mm -hmm. Look what he said. In the fertility of their thoughts, 
they are darkened, look, in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the hardness of their hearts, they became callous and gave themselves over to promise school obscurity for the practice of every kind of impurity. Now notice scripturally, man, this is good right here, man, scripturally, practice, the Bible, when Paul would talk about the practice of sin and evil things, the mind was always eluded with the wrong way of thinking. See what I'm saying? With the desire for more and more. You, I know everybody knows some people like that. I need more. I need more. I need more money. I need more this. I need more that. Hey, come to church. Man, I got to work. I got to need more. Man, I ain't you're not content in whatsoever state you're in. See? But this is not how you came to know Christ. He said, assuming you heard about him and were taught by him as the truth in Jesus to take off your former way of life, the old self that is corrupted by deceitful desires to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. See that? Yes. And to put on the new self, the one created according to God's likeness and righteousness and purity of the truth. So, look what he said up here. I really want you to get this before we go home. He said, don't walk as they do. And don't live as they do. In the fertility of their thoughts, they are darkened, darkened in their understanding. Right? Right? So their thoughts block their ability to obtain understanding. And because of that, they are excluded from the life of God. Because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the hardness of their hearts. So remember what I said. Where there's no understanding, there's ignorance. See what I'm saying? And when you're ignorant of something, you can't apply it. So we don't want to be ignorant of God's word. Amen. We want to gain understanding yes, of him. Right? Mm -hmm. mm. Let's go here. Romans 12. You see how scripture is pointing to the mind? The mind, the mind, the mind. Understanding, getting the understanding in your mind, your thought life. When you get understanding of the word, that's when you can begin to renew your mind in the word of God. And that's when you can begin to apply it in your life. Right? Even when you're going through something in your life, when you're becoming one with the world, you'll gain understanding on why you're going through it. Even if it's because you did it. <laughs> you'll still get understanding. Okay, I, now I see why I'm, I'm in, in this. Okay, well, I make sure I don't do that no more. Okay, Lord, now, now, now show me how to govern out of this right here. But when you're just ignorant and things going on, and you're like, why am I going through this? No, we need, you need to understand why. You know what I'm saying? And you can't take this religious approach to I'm just anointed. That's why every... Y'all know y'all done heard folks say, I'm by myself because I'm just anointed. Right. Now you by yourself because you might be nasty. <laughs> yeah, it's just the anointing on my life. No, nah, you're, you, you're just a bitter, nasty person. And you, and you, need, to, you, you need to get some deliverance in your mind and, and learn how to treat folks. You know what I'm saying? You, you're prideful. You, you're zealous. You're, you know what I'm saying? You're, 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 you're tripping. <laughs> That's why I might want to be around you. Hey, because you're anointed. It's the anointing on my life. No, bruh. It's because you're not friendly. Got a bad attitude. You know what I mean? You're a false teacher. 
<laughs> you know, but you, I know y'all done heard that before. Yeah. Good, I can't get married. I, I can't keep a man because I'm just annoying. It's the annoying draw him away. No. That ain't why they leaving. <laughs> that, ain't, that is not why they leaving. Shoot, bro, I'm just annoying it. You know? Shoot. You know? Just annoying it. No, you, 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 you can't maintain self-control with them women. That's why every relationship you get in, you know, she leaves you. You know? But I can prophesy and tell you how tomorrow gonna look. But why you can't stay in a relationship? Which one would you rather have? <laughs> the ability to see the future? But you really don't have the ability, because if I had that ability to really see the future, I'd go play the lottery. But that's God. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we don't control that. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's Holy Spirit. And we're going to teach on the gifts of the Spirit. Right? God uses it. You don't, you, don't, you don't have the ability of on-demand gifts. The Bible don't teach it. That's the, if, the whole, if God don't speak, it won't be spoken. Well, he won't be speaking. You'll be speaking. But he not. I'm just trying, I'm trying to teach y'all how to stop getting fooled by all this stuff. Man, God's so practical. He described the kingdom of God like yeast. We talking about one who knows everything. If he could have got deep, he could have got deep. Look how Jesus, she was so simple and plain. Calming. He wasn't flamboyant. You know? He was so simple, he was deep. <laughs> look, 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 look what Nicodemus say. How am I supposed to return back into my mom and come out again? <laughs> Didn't Nicodemus say that? <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute. How you, am I supposed to go back in my mom and come out again? I'm a grown man. That you see, it was so simple that, bruh, being born, you must be born again? What you talking about? But see, it takes God to reveal what Jesus was saying. It's the revelation. That's why apart from Holy Spirit, you ain't walking in nothing for real. Right? But teach me how to live. <laughs> Teach me how to access joy that he's been giving to me. Teach me how to access peace. Teach me how to love. Right? Teach me how to long suffer with people. Them miracles in the world we living in these days, because you don't see it. You want to stand out now? Look. You want your ministry to prosper? Look. Right? Be long suffering. Be charitable. Give. That's too simple. <laughs> we, that's too simple. We don't do that. Go see those that's in prison. Go to the hospital. But the Bible talks about that stuff. But we don't emphasize that stuff a lot. We want the great things. The spooky things. Nah, man. Don't pass by the homeless man that's sitting out there at the end of the driveway. You might be entertaining an angel. <laughs> right? Where am I? Romans 10 and 3. Arms in Romans 12. Therefore, thank you. Thank you, baby. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in the view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed. Being conformed, you know, that's mean being chameleon, you know, to this age. But be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. This is the part that I want you to look at. So that you may do what? Discern what is good pleasing and perfect will of God, right? So we must renew our minds, what, daily. But in order to renew our minds, we have to get understanding. It all goes back to understanding. 
if you don't have understanding, you're renewing your mind in the wrong thing. Because you think, you think it means one thing and it doesn't. Right? We have, to, we have to get understanding of his word. Romans 10 and 3. 10. I'm way over here in chapter. All right. Here we go. All right, here we go. Excuse me, come on. So here, Paul is talking about, he's going to usher us, uh, to the righteousness of God through faith. Uh, he, he talks about, when you get down to verse 20, 21, he talks about, you know, we're apart from the law and the righteousness of God has been revealed, attested by the law and the prophets. Early in this, he talks about Israel and how they missed it and, you know, the things that the children of Israel was going through because they did not have understanding. I'm trying to give you the context of all this so it can bring us down. But now there's a remnant that has been chosen by grace to live under grace, right? And we now have understanding of the mystery that they didn't get. Think about it, the children of Israel. Th this is why miracles don't work without understanding, right? Okay, children of Israel, all the plagues, the floods, all, all this stuff that Moses was going back to Pharaoh, the plagues came and then the plague where all the first son borns, the firstborn sons died and anybody who had the mark over their door with blood, the, the death angel passed over, this is where they get passed over from, then the sea was parted, then ran manna from here, all this stuff they seen and experienced, but still missed it. Why? And didn't have understanding. You know what I mean? Don't you know God can do for you and you still don't understand who he is? <laughs> that can't happen. Right? So now Paul comes back and says, but now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been revealed, attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God is through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe, since there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall, fallen short of the glory of God. They are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. God predestined him as the mercy seat by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness. Because in his restraint, God passed over over the sins previously committed. God predestined him to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so that he would be just and justly justify those who has faith in Jesus Christ. So God is a just God. That means that because of sin, there had to be punishment. Mm -hmm. right? right? There had to be punishment. There had to be bloodshed. Because of sin. There has to be a consequence. If not, he would not be a just God. So he sent his son to what? Die. To take on that punishment. But a lot of those who came before did not get understanding of that. See what I'm saying? They didn't. This goes back to the Pharisees. The Pharisees knew Jesus Knew of Jesus, but didn't know him. Mm -hmm. they, knew of him. they knew of him. Mm -hmm. Right? They had all the Torah, the law, all this stuff, but did not understand what it meant. Mm -hmm. In other words, they took it out of context. Mm -hmm. And a matter of fact, I forgot the name of them, I get it. It's some books that, that like commentary of the Torah. That different Pharisees, Sid schools, different scribe schools, you had all these different schools. 
they talk out of these commentaries of the Torah. Mm -hmm. So this is man's interpretation, and a lot of the interpretations was wrong. So Jesus had to come back and clear a lot of stuff up. You see what I'm saying? That's no different than me teaching you guys out of a Tony Evans book mm -hmm. instead of the word of God under the unction of the Holy Spirit, right? You're going to get... The, you're going to get Tony Avery's perspective, right, which is not going to birth the right understanding. So what, what was happening is Paul had to come and teach what all this really meant so the people could get the right understanding and they can be governed by the gospel and not the law. But even in our churches today, because we don't have an understanding of the Bible, and this is what we're going to start at next week, how to study the Bible. You got people even now still trying to live by the law. But they wearing mixed fabrics. Well, the moral law. We, but, but Jesus, Jesus said this. That if you do these two things, you'll fulfill the law. What is that? Love. Your neighbors, you love yourself, love God with all your heart. All right? Goes back to love. Goes back to feeding the sick. Goes back to, you know, going to see those and for what he said. The disciples asked, "Well, when, when, when did we see you? When did we? When we? When we?" They like, "What you talking about?" Once again, they ain't got no understanding. When you did it unto the least of them, you did it to me. Look how simple that is. We want to access favor. Do something with the provision that he's already given us. You, you, that's why I don't ever tell y'all, hey, y'all come give me, give me, give me $75 as a seed, collective. This is what God showed me. And you're going to get $75,000 worth of favor in your business. In your business. That don't work, ladies and gentlemen. You see what I'm saying? But how about taking the provision of your business mm -hmm. and going to do what God said do with yes. it? Mm -hmm. God then will open up doors. But usually the doors that he opened up are people. So now it goes back to learning how to govern your attitude, your character, and your integrity because people are doors. This is some amazing teaching here tonight. Mm -hmm. Right? People are doors. Yes, right? And this is why the Bible say, be at peace. If any way possible, be at peace with all men. Why? Because they're doors. Even if they're not saved, they're doors. They may hold what you need to get to the next level in your business. But if you're being taught, come from among them. You got that. Don't touch the unclean thing. You don't have understanding of what the Bible is taught. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So now here, they're not saved. I can't do business with them. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to flip a house. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know? I'm just trying. How do you know me building a relationship with them? Especially if I got peace in my heart. How that may end up drawing them to the kingdom. Y'all see what I'm saying? But the Bible say, don't test the unclean thing. Come out from among them. You done already came out from among them. You say. Be separate, say of the Lord. Come on, I done been to churches where, what you talking about? I'm just trying to get paid, baby. That's it. Yeah, this business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, 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 man. We got to tone it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Tone it, tone it down a little bit. It's okay by getting excited. Raw, 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 raw. Jump high, do all that, but let's leave it at where that. We doing that because we praising God. That is not accessing nothing. I can pour that oil all on your head. You walk out there more drenched in oil, and you just got all in the head. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you got some change. You see, 
So it's important for us to get understanding. Why? So we can access application. And we're going to get an understanding for this month, probably next month. Next week, we're going to get into how to study the Bible. We're going to look at the different priesthoods, the different covenants that God made. What's for us, what's not for us in the New Testament church. Amen? Because a lot of people go into the Old Testament and they'll pull out a lot of stuff that ain't for us. Just because it's in the Bible. Right? Right. And traditions that the Levites did and the, and the, the, the priests did, why are we, are we all priests? You know what I mean? Like, God is not in a physical temple anymore. He's in this temple. You see what I'm saying? We don't need an inner court with the tabernacle. Now, I, I didn't went in places where they got the, uh, the, the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant built and... And I'm like, well, well, I'm confused now. Because at this time, I'm a babe. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wait a minute. I thought the Spirit of God was, he, he's still in now? Because that's what it was for. It carried the presence of God, right? But now the presence of God is in us. But you will have people making this theatric and trying to relive what they read in the scriptures. And it has nothing to do with us. Right? If you want to put on garments to look good, we, that's fine. But don't be telling me that it's power in the garment. <laughs> or it's power in the prayer shawl. The prayer shawl gets me in, in his presence. He in you, lady. He's in you. He's there. Access that. Because what happens if you don't, can't get a prayer shawl? Now you can't get in his presence? You see what I'm saying? But if you just want to wear pressure, that's fine. You got that liberty. But don't make that doctrine. Don't make that. We're giving power to the creation and not the creator. Those things were done then because Christ had not came yet. You don't have to go slaughter an animal and, and put it on the altar and burn it and all that. You ain't got to do that no more. Jesus is the final sacrifice. Right? We got to get an understanding. Right? So tonight was kind of introductional. Really, really, really pointing what we finna get into because I want us to be effective. And the way that we're going to do it is starting with the word and getting an understanding of the scriptures. So next week, prepare yourself. We're going we're gonna to be talking about how to study the Bible. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise.